everybody. Dan Helley alongside Donnie Marshall and the Wildcats back home after a trip out west, taking on a Howard Bison team led by talented point guard Elijah Hawkins, and he's going to be going toe to toe with Colin Gillespie, only the preseason Big East Player of the Year. Don. Well, high potent offenses, that's for sure. And I know it's a small sample size, but for Howard, they're averaging just under 94 points a game. That guy right there's got him really playing the right way after a shortened season, shortened and then canceled season last year, which we'll get into. And there, of course, is Jay Wright, his 21st season as the head coach at Villanova. A couple of national titles already on his resume and inducted into the basketball Hall of Fame over the summer. And we are underway at Finner and Pavilion. First shot up and first shot good. <laughs> Howard taking the early lead, wasting no time as you chuckle, Donnie. Well, that, that's how they're going to play. I mean, this uh, potentially this is probably going to be like a uh, six, let's just say six, six and under league game. So if you're over six, six, you're probably not going to get a lot of time in this game. Yeah, they are going to be up and down and Firing away, there's no doubt about that. Here is Gillespie with his back to the basket, then outside to Moore. And Howard corrals the rebound. It's going to be important for the little guys, which is every guy on the floor, to come back and help and rebound. Long rebounds, a lot of three pointers will be taken in this game. Got to pay attention to Villanova and how they post up one through five. Drive it inside and then fouled is Randall Brumont, the transfer of from Columbia. A couple of Columbia transfers on this Howard team. That, of course, where Kenny Blakeney was before coming to Howard. Going to reset things here with Hawkins. Hawkins inside and off the hands of Devin Richmond. Villanova going to take over. And, and Howard has to pay attention to this, the strength. And maybe not so much the height, but the strength of Villanova. This is a Big East team. These are guys who, even though they may not be that tall, they're going to be strong. They'll stand you up. So you have to stick to your fundamentals if you're Howard, especially when you're moving without the basketball. Be ready to get hit. Good ball movement by Villanova. Justin Moore hits his first three in the ball game. The leading scorer for this team coming in, averaging 20 points per game. And a great pass by Dixon in the post. Blocking foul called on Villanova. You can see they're not happy with it. Sorting things out on the sideline with Coach Wright. Howard coming into this game having started 3-0 for just the third time in the last 40 years. It has been a tough road to hoe for this program, but Kenny Blakeney has him on the right track. Well, you, you said it three games. They've only won eight since he's been there in three years. Now, again, last year was shortened, but they're... Uh, they're starting to find themselves, and they still have some injuries, guys who have yet to play. And you can see the inexperience there from redshirt sophomore Steve Settle as the shot clock runs out. Kenny Blakely, Blakely not uh, too pleased with that result. Well, against Villanova, you got to understand, your cuts have to be sharp, your screens have to really be set well. They're going to stand you up. Yes, we just talked about how physical they are, but the other part of it is they know how to switch up into you. They're not just going to switch just to switch. They're switching to get you to turn the ball over. Back out to Gillespie from the... So Gillespie with his first three of the game. And it's going to be an interesting matchup with Elijah Hawkins, the freshman point guard. Out of the famed Amatha High School in the D.C. area. Blakeney told me today that he thinks he could eventually be a defensive player of the year candidate. Says his defense is so well. And you can see the emotion. 
already here. Well, defensively is one thing, but against Villanova, your offense has to go somewhere. A couple of turnovers. You can't have a violation in the backcourt like that. They're really, it's, it's not a lot of pressure that's being applied. I think sometimes you get a little anxious. You see this Villanova team in front of you. Haven't played a ton of games. You got to stay within yourself if you're Howard early on. And Howard with three turnovers so far. Here is Gillespie again from distance. Nova able to crowd the rebound back out to Gillespie. And that's good. Six point lead here early on for Nova. And what you love about Colin Gillespie is a, a miss won't dent his confidence. He won't stop shooting just because he misses one. And, and that all comes from Jay Wright instilling in him, you're our leader. You're going to have to shoot the ball for us. And pump fake kicks it out to Brandon. Slater gets in on the action. What a pass. What a Nova on a 12 0 run to get things started here in the first half. An NCAA tournament like atmosphere there went toe to toe, two of the heavyweights in the game. Yeah, I love that. These teams are playing each other so much earlier, you know, thanks to the Gavit games and other tournaments around. I mean, Villanova's weekend doesn't get any easier after this one, but these are the games that you just can't sleep in. You know what's ahead of you. You're playing a couple of ranked teams. You just come off the road. You have to focus, and so far, that's what Villanova's done. Gillespie off the mark this time. Rebound to Villanova, and with three men on him in the paint, Eric Dixon goes up strong and gets fouled. He'll be shooting two. And Eric Dixon is, is in a, a, a weird situation he's a, he's endangered in his own habitat right now and, and all that means is he's the biggest guy on the floor any turn with an elbow a body a hip and the the opponent falls it's going to be a charge so he's aware you can tell he's caught the ball he's he's taking his time he's made a couple of really good passes but as a big amongst littles you just have to be aware and officials will give the benefit to the smaller guy Dixon still shooting 100% from the line on the season. Now a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven in that UCLA game. Had a near double-double with 11 points and 9 rebounds. And Howard having trouble taking care of the ball early on. And they get a 3 here from Kyle Foster. A fearless shooter who is their best shooter from distance. They're coming into the game, 18 to 22 of his shots have been from three. So, in my opinion, that would be an easy guard. You got to make him put it on the floor. You can't let him just look over the top of you and let it go. There's more going to work on Foster and gets it to go. More such a nice job. Mid-range game, but he can extend out and shoot the basketball, knows how to back you down and set that old man game. Mm. And there's another three. This one coming from Jordan Wood. Started three of their five games last year. And Hawkins picking up Gillespie full court. Then only one two-point field goal in this game so far. This is my kind of game. <laughs> free throw line to free throw line. I mean, three-point line to three-point line. You kidding me? Brandon Slater, shot clock winding down, and they're not going to make it. 16-9. Four three-pointers from Nova, three from Howard. Wildcats lead. Final regular season game last year when he tore his MCL. Was watching the tournament and decided that he wanted to come back for a graduate year and I can't tell you, I don't think anybody was happier than Jay Wright to get Gillespie and Samuels back as grad students this year. Talk about a great summer. Inducted into the Hall of Fame for Jay. You hear that Colin Gillespie's coming back. I don't know if it gets much better than that. Foul going to be called on Slater. And oh, by the way, you win a gold medal at the Olympics, which Jay Wright told us was 
maybe the biggest achievement of his career considering all that that team overcame with COVID and so many of the big stars who didn't play in that game. It was a heck of a summer for Jay Wright. Spin move up and can't get it to go. Elijah Hawkins aggressively going to the rack. Caleb Daniels in the game now for Villanova. Here's Moore. They're going to call the foul on Jordan Wood. Great opportunity for Jay Wright to get some other guys in the game here a little bit. But the game is... It's, it's a weird game when you're playing early season. You're playing a you know, one of the best teams in the country, and then you go and you, you play a, a, a lower division one, if you will, a team that's trying to make something of themselves in Howard and try to keep your guys focused. But you have to give other guys minutes, and Jay Wright is doing just that. Out to Gillespie, wide open at the top of the key. It. That's Nana and Joku, the big yeah. freshman forward. They're going to need him this year. As you mentioned earlier, not a lot of size on the court. Yeah. Out of bounds, ball's going to stay here. And a great time for Jay Wright to, to put a young fella in. Give him a little taste. You're back home. Get the crowd into it. It's a terrific rebound put back but really because of his position and getting his work done early carving out space without fouling so important young guys just want to go get it they don't care what's in front of them like like a bull in a in a china shop just tears through everything that was a great move there six nine two sixty that's a that's a big bull <laughs> look at the space on this floor nothing in the middle and that's what it's going to be five out for howard but at some point, someone's going to have to go north to south. And they can't just keep going east to west, meaning sideline to sideline. That ball is going to either have to go off the dribble towards the paint or someone's going to have to make some back cuts because staying out on that perimeter, Villanova will guard you and, and, and you, you just there will be no opportunity to score if Howard continues that. Chris Archie Diacono checking into the game for Villanova. Steve Settle. Settle stepped out of bounds a moment ago and then called for that foul on Samuels. Here's Settle guarding Samuels and Samuels turns it over. Thomas Weaver right now running the point. Sorry, Donish. That's okay. He should have gone right up. He tried to shot fake, and now it turns into really a five-point swing. And that was Kyle Foster, his second three-pointer of the game. Again, picking up full court is Foster. Archie Diacono, too strong, gets his own rebound. That's how you're supposed to do it. Follow your shot. It, it, it used to be what coaches would always scream to you. Now you just don't see it as much. Maybe there are better shooters nowadays, but it still holds true. You follow that shot. You're the first person to know if it's in or not. Fouled on the shot. And Thomas Weaver going to the line. Couldn't tell if his foot was on the line or he was Gary a native. Grew up wanting to go to Georgetown and took a visit to Duke. I think he did Duke. okay. I think and he did okay. Johnny Dawkins kind of sold him on going to Duke. Yeah, he did well there, huh? <laughs> a couple national titles. I mean, come on. Now, you talk about a guy who's got some pedigrees learned from so many played for Morgan Wooten in high school coach K lefty Drizel throw in Mike Bray and Tommy Amaker I mean he's really learned from 
some amazing coaches. Actually said he first met Jay Wright when he was coaching at LaSalle with Mike Bray. And Jay Wright came into the conference and that ended their <laughs> their back-to-back -back conference championship run. He said, this guy's pretty good. Yeah, a lot of people know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Wright shows up. Oh, we're done. Caleb Daniels inside. And here's Eric Dixon just using his muscle. Nothing he can do to stop that. Great balance, though, without fouling. It's so hard to play in games like this for big boys. Elijah Moore going coast to coast. Or Elijah Hawkins, rather. Leading score for Howard. You talked about playing for Morgan Wooten. Elijah Hawkins went to the same high school as his head coach at DeMatha. There are actually four DeMatha kids who started this game. Three for Howard and one for Villanova. One of the great high schools in America when it comes to turning out basketball talent. And it tells you how important relationships are. You know, when I talk to young people, college kids, high school kids, and you know, they ask, well, you know, in, in the world of sports, whether it's coaching or playing, what, what's one of the most important things? It's, it's the relationships. And that's how you get four kids from your high school if you're Coach Blakeney. That, that's how you continue to play teams like Notre Dame because and a, your old coach is the head coach there. And it's all about relationships this game. It really is. Nice pass down low and then the finish from Randall Brumant. One of the two Columbia transfers in the starting lineup for Howard. And it's a four-point ball game. You know, remember, this is a, a, a Villanova team. Talked about if they're not big, they're still efficient. They're still fundamentally sound. But still kind of searching for that go-to guy when Gillespie's not on the floor. I think it's Justin Moore, but we haven't seen that. You know, they, there haven't been enough games. But that is just a terrific drive, draw a couple, and dish. Brandon Slater at the line. Well, he remains perfect on the season. I didn't want to say it before he shot, Donnie. I didn't want to jinx it. <laughs> Slater, really a story of perseverance. The senior wing didn't play a whole lot his first couple of years and had a couple of starts last year, just bided his time and really has worked his way into this Villanova starting lineup. I, mean, I, I really believe that's what, if you're willing to look in the mirror and say, I can learn, I really believe that that's one of the, the awesome things about Villanova and Jay Wright, the mentorship with some of these guys. And that's Steve Settle. The play created by Elijah Hawkins, who ripped the ball out of Gillespie's hands, and we're back to four points with 9.30 to go here in the first half. I always remember these games where, you know, you have your crowd, and the crowd's waiting for you to do something to get them into it, where it really should be the other way around. The crowd should do something to get you into it. <laughs> In and out for Slater. Spoiled, Dan. Understandably so. Understandably so. <laughs> shooting 70% from the floor. Oh, great look down low. And then the finish from Devin Richmond. Joined the team last year from Howard Community College in Maryland. And the deficit cut to two. And just unselfish play right now for Howard. That's all it is, guys. Spacing, getting each other out of each other's way, which is so important. Keeping your head up with the dribble. I mean, that's just a, a terrific basketball play, unselfish. It's the only way you're going to win a game or be in a game like this if you're Howard is to play together and, and, and stay together. So many times teams get their heads down. you gotta, you got to stay together, and that's exactly what they're doing. Here's Dixon. Kicking it out. That doesn't hit anything. Howard 
takes over now with a chance to tie things up or take the lead. Howard on an 8-2 run. After a slow start, they've really settled in here at Finneran Pavilion. foul on Brumant. I don't know. I know the refs are on top of it. I just, I don't agree with it. You, I don't think you should be able to take a charge with your right knee. I just, I don't agree with that because that means you're leaning in. If you take it square in the chest, okay, so so be it. But that to me is not a good call. Yeah, it looked like you got there a little late too. Mm. Call a foul on settle. And so now you don't want to compound your problems. So yeah, it was a bad call, and now a foul. Now you send Villanova to the foul line. You just have to figure out how to play through those situations. It's Caleb Daniel, second year in Villanova. Average nine points per game. In 24 starts. First couple of seasons at Tulane. And back to a four point ball game with eight minutes to go here in the first half. I like the patience that Howard's showing, though. Communication has been there, guys are confident. Nice looking shot there by Steve Settle. Another one of those DeMatha kids. Settle, a 5'8 freshman in high school, has grown to 6'11. Redshirted him as a freshman and put on a couple of pounds. He's turned into a really good player for the Bison. Yeah, Blaney said that he could be, he's got the skills to be an outside threat, and there you saw it a little bit. Gillespie. Gillespie, the leading scorer in the game after another three. It's just a, an eraser. He, he erases all your problems. You're in a funk, a little slump, and he cleans it up for you, Gillespie. Steve Settle trying to back his man down, turns it over. Nine field goals is tremendous. You get on the road against a great team, not good, but a great team, a top five team in Villanova. Shows a lot of character in the way that they're playing right now, Howard. It's Caleb Williams. And Howard able to come up with a loose ball. Here comes Hawkins. The oop, and he gets it to fall. The pass from Hawkins to Ty Bibbs. Tell you, the charge take at the other end, fortunate that the officials didn't call a flop there. But to come out of that and to push it, again, the confidence to be able to throw that ball up, basically you're seeing that I believe my teammate is more athletic than Colin Gillespie is down there, and I'm going to let him go get it. Ty Bibbs, the... Grad transfer from Columbia, where he played for Blakeney when Blakeney was an assistant. Randall Brumant, the other Columbia grad transfer. defense every day of the week tough finish by Elijah Hawkins the freshman from DeMatha High School now with seven points for the Bison 
Yeah, I'm so impressed by the way Howard is continuing to push the ball and to get downhill even when Villanova knocks down a big three and this crowd tries to get into it. And there's the big fellow with a three. Eric Dixon saying, I'm versatile too, coach. <laughs> Settle from just inside the three-point line. It just, it's one of my pet peeve shots. I just, I don't like the shot. If you're going to shoot that, your heels are on the three-point line, just back up. Back up a couple inches, get the extra point. Well, what do they say, Donnie? That's the worst shot in basketball. Absolutely. It really is. Until it goes in. And, and yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with it. Villanova up by five with just over five to go here in the first half. Justin Moore being guarded by Bibbs. A lot of Shot. dribbling going on here. Oh. And he is fouled with the shot clock winding down, so Moore will go to the line. Justin Moore does such a good job of keeping that dribble alive and just working his way down to that painted area to try to force you to either foul him or or he just shoots over you really grinds you down just such an experienced team is villanova four out of their five starters upper classmen including a couple of fifth year guys slater's a senior and not deep. I mean, and Jay Wright is used to coaching that way, but I will say with a short bench, you can't be absent without permission. That is for sure. You, when you have six guys, seven guys, all six or seven have to show up every single night. Well, it is interesting in the world that we live in now where freshmen come in and have an immediate impact and some move on to the NBA after one season. Villanova didn't play a single freshman against UCLA. Talking about a tight rotation, they basically played just seven guys. Yeah. And no, uh, to me, Justin Moore getting into some foul trouble is really the only thing that kept them from losing that game. He just could not get into a rhythm regardless of what he scored. Well, I'll tell you who's getting into team. a rhythm is Elijah Hawkins. <laughs> yeah. He now has nine. <laughs> Hits that tough left-handed layup. They're going to call the foul on Hawkins here. Elijah Hawkins, one of the top freshmen in the MEAC this year, came in averaging 18 points per game. Kenny Blakeney said, I've given him a lot of responsibility, and I compare this to what Coach K did with Bobby Hurley at Duke his freshman year. He said, we need you to do this, and we expect you to get better, and we're going to go through some growing pains. And they have. That's what's happened with Hawkins. He had eight turnovers in the last game. You saw a couple early turnovers here tonight, but he's getting more comfortable. I understand what he's saying, but I think you can... The growing pains don't hurt as much when you have Christian Leitner and Grant Hill <laughs> out there on the floor with you. I'm just saying, I, I get the message a little different. I hear you. Yeah, it is <laughs> just just a wee bit when you have a just couple a of All-Americans out there with you. Uh, Bibbs got it. Mm. Back to a four-point game, just over four to go. 71% from behind the arc for Howard. They're 14 of 17 from the floor, Donnie Sarr. It, it's interesting that Coach Blakely said, listen, we, Coach Blakely says that we're going to be able to score the ball. I just need us to focus defensively. And we're seeing a little bit of that scoring. They're doing a pretty good job. They're just a step slow to get out to that three-point line, and that's what Villanova does. They stretch you out. They make you take an extra two or three steps to close out on them. If you get too deep, you're dead. Slater had a leading score in the game with 11. He's perfect from distance, three for three from beyond the arc. Heat check for Hawkins. Samuels pass knocked out of bounds by Hawkins. You want threes? We have your three. And Kyle Foster. Check 
Justin Moore. Slater with the pull up. Moore for three. Villanova is one of the best teams in the entire country. And maybe it's because of their lack of size at going up and tapping those rebounds back to their guards on the perimeter really has turned into a, a set play for them, if you will, on the glass. Here's Settle off the mark from the baseline. 2.20 to go here in the first half. Wide open from the corner is Brandon Slater. Slater now four for four from three. It's Villanova basketball. McKilly against a team that they're expected to beat. And they're going to play Tennessee and North Carolina or Purdue. All neutral courts. They're going to be battle-tested by the time conference play begins. That's a Hall of Fame tip-off. Uncasville, Connecticut. Foster for three. And the Bison refusing to go away. away. They're not going away. You read my mind. <laughs> Back to a 10-point game, under two minutes to go here in the first half. Justin Moore guarded by Foster, then Bibbs. And he gets the shooter's roll. And how about one more? Now a nine-point ball game. And Kyle Foster... The best three-point shooter on this team, now a perfect four for four. Well, Howard's got to figure out a way to stand up defensively. As Villanova is just so comfortable right now, especially this guy. Hawkins pushing the pace a little bit here. Settle from the corner, got it! 50 to 44, a little demathed to demathed connection. 77% from the floor, nearly 73% from three point range, and Kyle Foster is leading the way. The only player on that Howard roster before Kenny Blakeney got there. Strong take by Justin Moore. But there just aren't a lot of guys in college basketball that can take it wire to wire and slow the pace totally down, and you'd be okay with them dribbling out most of the clock. Just about a four-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Hawkins guarded by Archie Diakonos. <laughs> Foster, his first miss from distance today. Four seconds to go. It's a situation where Howard probably doesn't want to go in at halftime. <laughs> They're hot. Let's just stay out here. Just keep the clock going. Let's just play. Smoking. Baseball pass. One last shot. Just off the mark for Gillespie, so it's going to be 52-44 going into the locker room at halftime. I tell you, after the first two minutes of this game, it looked field so far. And, Donnie, I'm assuming you're like me. After all these empty arenas last year, and I know we've seen it with football, just seeing the student section going crazy at these games just puts a smile on my face. Yeah, it's, it's awesome for it just kind of you know listen it's bigger than sports we we know that what it's been the last year and a half or so but when you see fans in the stands you feel like we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy loose ball corralled by dixon off the gillespie miss and then he puts it on the ground and brandon slater there to clean up the mess slater now with 16 points he's one away from a career high and he might get it I, I Career high 
for Slater with 18 and getting ready to add to it here, a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Again, it's just what they do. Well, most teams will throw an alley-oop up. Colin Gillespie waits for a trailer. This is just great. Defensively, they just make you uncomfortable. He could have thrown the alley-oop. He says no higher percentage. I mean, that is just filling over basketball. You may get bored with the bounce passes, the two-foot jump stops, but I'll tell you what, I never get bored with winning. <laughs> and that's just <laughs> what they continue to do. They'll let everyone else throw alley-oops. Go ahead. We're just going to win. They are so sound. They're top seven players, all upperclassmen. Next four, all freshmen. There's Settle. Off the mark with that one-handed runner. Yeah, I think it's important for people to know that Villanova's going to lose games, but they're going to win more games than, than you would expect when it comes down to the line. When it comes down to a team, no matter big or small, they just understand with veterans and obviously terrific coaching how to win those close games. You know, sometimes when you talk about Nova, people think, oh, listen, there are other teams better. Sure, but... In tough games, you know exactly. Jay Wright knows who he has and what he's getting from every one of them. Going to call the foul on the floor. That was Hawkins with the shot for Howard. And Villanova off to a hot start here in the second half. This one on Slater. Second foul of the game for Slater. And taken away off the inbounds by Brandon Slater. Nice defensive play. Their unsung hero on this team. He really is. He's, you talked about it in the first half. He's waited his turn, bided his time. He's learned from a lot of really good players, and now it's his shot. Speaking of unsung heroes, Jermaine Samuels, so many big shots and game winners throughout his career. Been a little bit of a Robin to other players, Batman. Those guys have since moved on to the NBA, and he is still here. And finally, a shot falls for the Bison, Randall Brumant. They've had some Jeremiah Robinson, those guys, but they're not back to the basket, you know, take you down. I think Justin Moore backs down more than those guys did. So this is a team that Jay Wright understands, and any of those people criticizing, got to watch him play a few times. Gillespie turning it over, and Hawkins comes away with it. Bison trying to chip away at that 13-point lead, working it down low. And then corralling the rebound. And there you go right there. Samuels does a great job standing his ground. You know, they make you take tough shots, and then they go get it. Inside to Moore, saves it falling down. Slayer thinks about it for a moment. Good ball movement. And here's... Gillespie on the low block kicks it back out to Caleb Daniels. And the rebound comes down to Howard. Best defensive set for Howard right there. They needed it. They closed out on guys. They stayed down on shooters. They settle again. His foot might have been on the line. That would be the second time he's done that. But it was uh, indeed a two-pointer for settle. Oh, percentage. Step back. Get an extra point. You're, you're right there. The sophomore still learning. Here's Gillespie going to work on the freshman, kicking it out to Moore. on you because as you stay down and you don't go for shot baits you think they're gonna put it down once and then find the next guy if no one comes these Villanova players know how to read the defense they'll turn the corner and score we've already saw seen Samuels do that a couple of times in this game 
Caleb Daniels now, they just understand how to read you defensively. If, if help comes, they find a teammate. Caleb Daniels and Chris Archidiacono, the two primary contributors off the bench. We have seen the freshman, Nana Njoku, in the first half. Perhaps we will see him again. Sixty-two forty-eight with just over six, 16 minutes to go. Deep three. And he hits it. Kyle Foster pulling the trigger in the first half and continuing to do so here. He's five of six from three-point range. And every field goal is from that area. Again, just close out. Make him dribble at once if you're feeling over. Foster from... Bethel High School in Hampton, Virginia, the same high school as Allen Iverson. Here's more. Open in the corner, and again, Howard hits. This time it's Ty Bibbs. They do a great job of spacing. They run to the corners. So now when you're taught to run to the paint and then find guys on the perimeter, you have to cut that short <laughs> if you're a defensive team and just go straight to those guys that are standing there with their hands waiting for a pass in the corners. And double team comes down on Gillespie. A settle called for the foul. But once again, we're talking single digits. Howard. Okay, Blakeney has a, he's done a great job of telling his guys, listen, stay spaced, stay in your area, give your teammates room to work. And that's how all these shots have been going down for settle. Both teams now with 10 made threes. There's more working on the freshman. And Gillespie sneaks it in down low. Jermaine Samuels is going to be fouled there by Bryce Harris. Boy, Samuels was down there a long time posting up. <laughs> It's a call we don't see a lot in college basketball, three seconds in the key anymore. I mean, you can stand down there the entire play, and, and most officials, there's so much going on on the perimeter that they're just not looking down there. Another made free throw by Jermaine Samuels. Nova, a perfect 13 for 13 from the line. Look at the numbers for Jermaine from that last game. He was the leading scorer for Villanova against UCLA. What a fun game that was to watch. Actually watched it twice. Yeah, really, really well-played game. It, it did feel like a, a, a tournament game, but I think that's the idea with those, those early season games. Coaches can get their players to see what it feels like early on. Deep three off the mark from Hawkins. be taking his time and here's more on the sophomore settle gets it off right before the shot clock and flying in comes Brandon Slater and Nova knows how to use every second of that clock. And then you fall asleep just a little bit. It just, you know, we talk and, and we, we compliment Jay Wright and the things he's done as a head coach of Villanova and the players that he's had come through and the NBA guys. But I think sometimes what we lose sight in is, is how fundamentally sound these guys are and how unselfish they are. Yes, great players, great teams, championships. But individually, these guys have sacrificed so much for one another, and it continues, no matter who's in that uniform, it continues to be the same theme. Slater now with 21, continuing to add to his career high. 16 for 16 from the line is Villanova. Back to a 12-point lead for the Wildcats. Nice pass to a cutting Ty Bibbs, who will shoot two. Slater on the foul. 
That's just a terrific, risky backdoor play with two white jerseys over there in the corner. They paid it off. Chance to go knock down a couple. Devin Richmond set to check in momentarily for Howard. I mean, normally you run a backdoor play when it's one on one on the wing or the corner or two on two, not three <laughs> three defenders on the same side. But it worked. It worked. He threaded the needle. Certainly a risky proposition against this Villanova defense. <laughs> And Ty Bibbs making it a 10-point ball game once again. And Kenny Blakeney looking on after just a brutal first couple of seasons with Howard. And Dylan over turns it over, so Howard's going to get the ball right back. But he's finally brought in some of his guys. He was with the Columbia, obviously used the transfer portal, as so many schools have done. And he's trying to build a program that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament in 30 years. Hawkins. Good move, can't finish. Here comes Gillespie. Going to call a travel on Jermaine Samuels, the super senior. And we're you still... I'm um, Garson. Donnie, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Dan, you, you mentioned Blakeney and, and trying to get this team back to a place they, they haven't been in a long, long time. But And we had spoken about the relationships that he's made. He's been at 71 schools in the last 12 years. I think you, you, you make that many stops at some great schools. You're going to pick up some, some tricks and some tips, not only for recruiting, but to try to get your team into an NCAA tournament. Good pass down low. Then the foul called on Caleb Daniels. He thought he had a clean block. Here's a look. Another nice little bounce pass. A little bit on the hand, possibly. Yeah, a lot of hand on that ankle. Hand and wrist. Third foul on Daniels. He used to have teammates that would smaller guys that would have plays like that and they would always yell your hand is a part of the ball <laughs> like I, I guess but if you hit my elbow first and then the ball comes out you, you got to be near my hand if your hand is a part of the ball Randall Brumant gets the second to go and then a deep pass down to Justin Moore Pulls it back out for a moment, and they're going to get Hawkins with the foul. And that's three on the freshman, Elijah Hawkins. One of several local players from the DMV on this Howard team. He's from the District of Columbia, and mentioned earlier the DeMatha High School tie-in. in a hurry <laughs> never you're so right when he's handling the ball he makes you play which I think the great players really do that they make you play at their pace and they slow it down and it feels like everything around him slows down he knew right away Kyle Foster did he was looking for a bounce pass and Just no airspace. Nope, couldn't not squeeze much. that one in. <laughs> you, you couldn't. Yeah, you're not throwing that through two kneecaps. Jordan Longino tech, checking in the game for Villanova. The freshman from Bucks County, PA. Turn around. And Villanova grabs a rebound.
Good defense by Howard. Justin Moore unable to get it to go. This is Weaver. What, what a hustle play from Justin Moore. Huh. When you turn the ball over or you miss a shot, no one wants to get it back more than you do, and that's just what happened on both those plays for Justin Moore diving, giving up his body to poke that ball away. <laughs> Bibbs back in the ball game for Howard. Ball screen up top. Sweet little pull-up jumper there from Foster. He's been doing most of his damage from beyond the arc. Hits the two, now has 17. Yeah, you really have to be more clinical in what you do at both ends of the floor against Villanova. And that was a, a clinic there by Foster. Looking inside for Samuels. Nice pass down low. Samuels to the Dixon. Textbook. Crowd favorite. You can hear every time he touches the ball, Dixon. This crowd just goes crazy for him. The only underclassman in the starting lineup. Redshirt sophomore from Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. the rebound pushes it up and there is the freshman Jordan Longino gonna be heading to the free throw line Villanova textbook as always up by 10 your players listen to you and believe in what you're telling them win lose or draw and it, this nothing but positive can come from playing against Villanova especially the way Howard's playing First point of the ball game for Jordan Longino, top 100 recruit, recruit from Furlong, Pennsylvania. Pretty good quarterback in high school as well. His dad played in college, and his brother Evan Eric plays at Cutstown currently. Hey, it's awesome to get in the game after sitting on the bench for an hour and a half and knocking down a couple of free throws and extending the Villanova lead to 12 as Hawkins loses the ball out of bounds, something the Bison can ill afford at this point in the ballgame. And it's just a little thing. Archie Diakono's in the corner, really trying to overplay that pass to the corner, and Eric Dixon just lets his player just dribble the ball to the side and there was nothing there so it forces you now to think and the ball goes off of your foot it's, it really is the little things in these games inside to Dixon back out to Gillespie little shot fake hits the open man and Samuels drains it we talk about the three point shooting and what Villanova has done to start the half, but also start the game. Look, almost half their points have come off of turn points off of turnovers and from the foul line. So it's not just them shooting threes. They do so many great things. Strong rebound grabbed by Randall Brumant. Here's Hawkins. Tough shot with Gillespie playing good defense. Archie Diacono out to Gillespie. Gillespie for three. <laughs> Villanova on a 10-0 run. Now up by 18. It's just beautiful how a guy will drive. He'll kick it, and then he'll just flare out. He makes sure he doesn't stand still. So many times you see guys drive, they pass to a wing, and then they kind of just float under the basket. Villanova knows. You kick it, get out immediately, and your teammate will find you. Another three-pointer off the mark for Howard. Shot so well from distance in the first half, but that can only last for so long. They were 
Shoot about 65%. Great ball movement from Villanova. Archie Giacono just a little short. And they're going to call the offensive foul on Ty Bibbs. And Justin Moore standing in, giving up his body again. Look at that, just squaring up. Now that's a charge take, not with the knee or leg stuck out. That charge was taken right square in the chest. Full court pressure here from Howard. Down by 18, eight and a half to go in the game. Archie Diakono's ball handling, getting a rise out of the crowd. Check that, that was Gillespie. Gillespie shoots it down. So many players would make the move, they'd hear the crowd, and then they'd shoot a bad shot. It's awesome to see Colin. This is just who he's been his entire career. The same kind of look on his face. Great ball handling here. Stops without pushing off. Most guys would throw up a floater. He gives it up, flares out a little bit, knocks it down. Beautiful basketball. And by most guys, you mean like 95% of Americans <laughs> would do that. Maybe more. <laughs> you hear the crowd going crazy. Maybe, maybe more. <laughs> you want that exclamation point, but he was patient and he got it. Tough shot from Hawkins. Mm. And that ends a drought. The freshman now with 12 points. He's tough. Yeah, he doesn't need it in his hand a long time to let it let it go and knock it down. Hawkins with 23 points in the opener against University of District of Columbia. Firebirds of UDC. And here's Gillespie. So smooth, making it look so easy. And a 20-point lead now for Villanova. Got to remind people, Colin Gillespie's a kid that had no scholarship offers until after his state championship game his high school, his senior year. Jay Wright jumped all over that. A lot of Division twos. And Jay Wright saw a diamond in the rough. And boy, is Gillespie's game against Creighton. Decided to come back for a graduate year shortly thereafter. Jermaine Samuels decided to come back for a graduate year as well. And Jay Wright was one of the happiest coaches in all of the land. And they decided relatively early, which meant that Wright didn't have to scramble in recruiting. He knew exactly what he was looking for. And so Villanova remains perfect. They're 20 for 20 from the line tonight, up by 22 now in the game. Settle handing it off to Bibbs. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Bibbs working on Slater. Somebody has to get it up. And Hawkins does, but it does not hit the rim. Villanova gets the ball back up by 22. Another terrific defensive set. Stay in front of your guy. You know, foot speed is one thing, but just understanding concepts. Scouting report, know what they're going to run. When they call something out, everyone is on a string, meaning if I go one way, there's an invisible string, I pull you with me. Help one another out. Here's Gillespie. Thought about it. Gets it to Slater. Slater puts it on the deck. Nice pass from the freshman to Caleb Daniels. That's Jordan Longino with the look. And that's how you get playing time. It's not flamboyant dunks and making long threes with Jay Wright. It's the simple things, unselfishness, being in the right spots, that's how you earn time. Hawkins. Mm. 
Cardinals step back three. And Hawkins now with 15. These are the games you remember coming into a place like Villanova as a freshman just playing the third game of your college career. Mm -hmm. And some nice moments for several of these players on Howard's basketball team. Gillespie, they'll call the foul on the ground on Ty Bibbs. And there is a look at Colin Gillespie, preseason All-American. And now we've made it official. We've just we've just jinxed him, Donnie. I don't know if Gillespie can be jinxed, though. Thank God. I was going to feel really bad. There was a lot of rim, though. <laughs> Very loud make. Yeah, it wasn't clean. <laughs> a little better. There you go. Back to a 23-point lead for Villanova. Five and a half to go here in the game. Jordan Wood. And here's a freshman. Again, shot clock winding down. Nice pass. And then the finish from Steve Settle. And they do a nice job of keeping their heads up. Looking for teammates cutting. Any type of airspace. They, they've really done a, a terrific job. And even if this was a little bit of a bailout, at least your teammate is there for you to see that you're in trouble. Remember, man, this is a team that has... They have some guys who are, who are not playing. Dontarius James is one of those guys that, when he comes back, is really going to help them. Dontarius James, the senior who was a preseason all-conference selection, a transfer from Jacksonville. He's transferred a couple of times, so mm -hmm. they're trying to get him cleared academically. Apparently, it's a little more difficult when you've transferred more than once. And also without Sam Green tonight, Drexel transfer and Khalil Robertson. Well, Dontarius, the preseason player of the year. I still think he's one of the guys. Still hustling and still scrapping both of these guys. I should say Don Terrace James, newcomer of the year when, when he does finally come back. But you're right, guys, on the floor, giving up their bodies. And when you've taught that for four or five years now, if you're Jay Wright, there's no way you can tell. Jermaine Samuels, listen, just... To, it, the game is pretty much in hand. We, we, we still have some time, but we, I'm feeling pretty confident. Try to stay upright. That's exactly what he was saying, isn't it? <laughs> stay upright, please. What, what are you doing? Yeah, listen, this is as good as they are. When you are, you only play six or seven guys, maybe eight, if he gives freshmen some time. There's a small margin for error and small margin for injuries as well. And there we have Kyle Foster and one. And so Foster now with 19. Now one of the few times that the Villanova guys have left a teammate on an island, usually the help comes across that baseline and kind of stands you up. So you're almost a double team, maybe even trying to take a charge. Villanova lead 425 to go here at Finneran Pavilion. Justin Moore working on the freshman Hawkins. And they're going to call it travel. He realized the mismatch on the 5'11 freshman and was just trying to bully his way to the basket.
Good, good hustle. Good effort play there by Howard. Ty Bibb saving it. And Hawkins fouled on his way to the basket by Caleb Daniels. So Howard still hanging around. We're back after this. You don't take their time to shoot free throws. Listen, listen, there are some just some bad shooters, and it's, it's just it takes so much time. But it's a thing that's so easy to practice. It really is, and, and more importantly, it decides the outcomes of so many games, week in, week out, NCAA tournament, conference tournaments. It's such a huge aspect of the game that I think the least amount of time is spent on it. Gillespie. It, it's funny you say that about free throws. I was at a Lakers game the other night and watching you know, Dwight Howard, who's had an unbelievable NBA career, can't make a free throw. Yeah. You know, obviously there's the, the Shacks of the world, Hall of Fame players can't make a free throw. Are some people just more inclined to be shooters is it just more difficult for some as opposed to others you know I, i'm all, i'm of the thought process that it's ten thousand hours you know i just think you have to put the time in and some guys say my hands are too small we've heard guys say hands are too big i just i don't i don't believe in either one of them i've played with guys who have really small hands who are terrific shooters and guys who play with the biggest hands i've ever seen who are some of the greatest shooters ever so I just think it's time. I think you got to you have to put the time in well, Let's face it even though just because you're in the NBA doesn't mean that you've always put the time in <laughs> sure it's Just what it is The Malcolm Gladwell approach with 10,000 hours Absolutely. An outlier Here's more Longino off the mark here comes Howard And Howard able to reset. Thought about it, then he takes the shot, does Jordan Wood. And for Wood, that's now five points in the game. Good play, two foot jump stop. It allows you to step back a little bit once you've come down on the two feet, but I'm telling you. Don't look at this score. This Howard team is going to do some things this year. I really believe that. Again, good pass. Caleb Daniels on the finish. They've just come so far mm. since Kenny Blakeney got there. Oh, good hustle by Villanova. And giving it right back. Here's Bibbs. Little Euro step gets it to go. And he talked about how he wants to recruit guys with character, guys that are tough, obviously, and, and guys who believe in, in, in on, on either away from Finneran Pavilion or on neutral floor. So this is a challenging schedule. Uh, Jay Wright telling us that he really, when he knew that Gillespie and Samuels were going to be back and he was going to have this team this year, he really wanted to take the schedule to the next level. They always play tough schedules pre, pre-conference, but uh, he wanted even uh, more difficult this year. Good strong take by Samuels, who goes to the ground hard. I just, you know, I, there aren't a lot of things, if any, that I disagree with with Jay Wright. I, I know him really well. We all do. We love him. Players in the game this late to me, I've never, I've never understood it. You know, especially when those players are so valuable, and you don't want to play a game thinking, "Hell, we played to not get hurt." But I think the game is wrapped up. You got some guys on the bench. You know, the last thing you want to see is these guys, as much as you want them to have reps and, and minutes. You just, I hate to see them in a game this late. Anything could happen. We've seen it in the NBA with plenty of guys. I think they need to be out of the game and on the bench. A couple of starters, a couple of freshmen on the court right now, but to your point, you know, Gillespie's still in. Yeah. I mean, I guess, listen, that's why I'm here <laughs> running my mouth and he's on the sideline and in the Hall of Fame, so. <laughs> Come on, 
and Gino off the mark. Hall of Fame summer, Olympic gold medal summer. Mm. And Other he, than that, he really didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, think about it. pretty boring. <laughs> He was talking about that Olympic team, and he said, he said, it might be the greatest thing I've been a part of, more so than the national championships as a coach. Wow. That's pretty lofty. He goes, it was, you can't even fathom how difficult a process it was. He said, you know, we're losing guys right before we head over there, like Bradley Beal. You know, you have studs that weren't playing, like LeBron. You were quarantined over there the entire time. You didn't have your family there. He said in the, the brotherhood that we were able to build as the dunk is thrown down by Samuels on a coaching staff with Pop and Kerr and Van Gundy. He goes, we're just, we're, we're connected for life. And he said, I told Pop, I said, being a head coach of this team is like the worst job in the world because the <laughs> expectations are so high. Yeah. And we saw that early on, right? But did he play Marion this summer? No, he didn't. I did. Did he play Pine Valley? No, he did not. <laughs> I did. So at least I, I got that on him from the summer. But other than that, he, hey, you have that on me too, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on my bucket list for sure. Fifty seconds to go here. Villanova trying to get to 100. Been a nice night for them, and been a nice night for Howard too. Mm. Impressive for performance team, for a team that doesn't play fast. Villanova scores a lot of points. <laughs> oh, no you know, doubt. for a team that really makes you play their way. Already coming into this game, out of 84 points again. Kevin Voigt checking into the game, the senior from Massapequa, and you can hear the crowd on their feet roaring for Voigt. And here come your guys, Donnie. Now, now they're getting in with under a minute to go. There you go. I, I would love to put a heart rate monitor on these guys to get in this time of the game. <laughs> it's got to be 200. Just throw a little whoop on them or something like that. Get a little band just to see where their heart rates are. We, we see it in, for golfers. We talk about it all the time. Look at them. Getting in there. Well, you can't relate. I can't relate. Yeah, I can only imagine how much that heart is fluttering when they get in there and, and the crowd go crazy. Let's see if they try to get them a bucket here. Freshman hitting a three. Smart. And then Howard breaks the 80-point barrier. Villanova at 100. And that will be the final. The Bison of Howard University coming in, playing one of the...